a dating app for all of us conservatives. It's called The Right Stuff. That's why I created Conservative Dad's ultra-right, 100% woke-free beer. Parlor styles itself as a, quote, free speech-driven space. It was founded in 2018 and has largely attracted U.S. conservatives. All right, kids, I need to talk to you about safe spaces because you're going to want to have at least one. A spot where folks share their experiences and lives with each other and hopefully where everybody knows your name. For some people, this can be a bar or a library. There's bars called the library. My safe space was going to be this ice cream spot, but... They kept telling me that I abused the free sample policy, so there's that. With that said, safe spaces come in all shapes and sizes. However, they come from one place, the Democrats. The safe space movement is a liberal assault on freedom. It won't be long before safe spaces take over our homes. Little Cindy leftist Lou, who always votes blue, got that way in college, where progressives, like me, were hoping she likes to steal ice. I mean, she still likes ice cream. It's the left who wants to coddle kids. Life ain't always comfortable. The real world isn't a quilt. Just look at what the CNN talking head said. We have to get away from these people. I know that might trouble some people listening to the show today. We have to get away from these people. See, Dan Bongino is, wait, this Dan Bongino? Safe spaces are colossal bull, and I'd love to say the rest, but there may be kids around. Oh, Dan Bongino, the former cop, former Secret Service agent, former three times Republican Congress candidate loser, former Fox News show host, and former investor in Parlor, but not really, who also said, we have to evacuate these liberal states and shrink the federal government to the point where we can live in our own freedom and liberty loving enclaves. But. So if you're on a college campus that's telling you safe spaces is real, you are paying to get screwed in the real world. You hear me? Screwed. There are no safe spaces. There aren't any safe spaces in law enforcement. There aren't any safe spaces in the business world. There aren't any safe spaces anywhere. Weird. Maybe I missed something, but it seems like a particular political ideology can have safe spaces. I bet black people can't. More on that later. People of a certain age can't either. Meanwhile, Baby boomers used to sing along to the Cheers theme song where everybody knows your name and they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see our troubles are all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. So, a safe space is defined as a place that provides a physically and emotionally safe environment for a person or a group of people, especially a place where people can freely express themselves without fear of prejudice, negative judgment, etc. According to Vox, Malcolm Harris had a good brief history of the term safe space, citing scholar and activist Myra Kennedy's book, Mapping Gay LA, to explain that the term originated in gay and lesbian bars in the mid 1960s. Quote, with anti-sodomy law still in effect, a safe space meant somewhere you could be out and in good company, at least until the cops showed up. Gay bars were not safe in the sense of being free from risk, nor were they safe as in reserved. A safe place was where people could find practical resistance to political and social repression. We've talked about this before in a video that I made about how and why Columbus became so LGBTQ friendly, a safe space. Also, this one about drag describes how anti-cross-dressing laws makes no sense once you get into where articles of clothing and accessories originate and who originally wore them. Now this article from Mindhacks also cited Fusion, saying that the concept of the safe space didn't start with queer communities, but corporate America, due to the work of psychologist and 20th century academic, Kurt Lewin. Lewin left Europe after the rise of Nazism and moved to the United States. Although originally a behaviorist, he became deeply involved in social psychology at the level of small group interactions and eventually became director of the Center for Group Dynamics at MIT. If you've ever heard of social dynamics or have given someone feedback, then you know Lewin's work. Well, in the late 1940s, Lewin was asked to help develop leadership training for corporate bosses, and out of this work came the foundation of the National Training Laboratories and the invention of sensitivity training. You know, that thing that Fox News mandates for its employees. No, not COVID vaccines, but I can see where you're going with that. Anyways, 
Sensitivity training was a form of group discussion where members could give honest feedback to each other to allow people to become aware of their unhelpful assumptions, implicit biases, and behaviors that were holding them back as effective leaders. And I'm sure the idea of an open, honest environment without judgment dates back to the founding of this country, right? The only people who were able to vote were white men who owned property. That's identity politics for those who hate it. And if you're a I think we should focus on what unites us type person. Before you say that, just know that it's on my list of stuff that y'all bet not say to me. Just above, Mr. Wiggins, I'm sure you understand that a pint of ice cream isn't a sample. Separating people causes division? America has always been divided. Since before the first US census identified Africans as slaves, othering an entire continent, calling them black. Then there's the Mason-Dixon line, the Kansas-Nebraska Act, the Trail of Tears, reservations, Jim Crow, separate but equal, redlining, Japanese internment, putting highways through black neighborhoods in order to get white people to and from the suburbs. The suburbs. Safe space. Today, the average white resident in metro areas lives in neighborhoods that are 71% white and three of four white people only have one black friend. I get it. With everything I just mentioned, that's why there's such a fine line between segregation and a safe space. And as I alluded to just last week, when people who at the very least lean left try to provide black people, for example, comfort and protection away from white supremacy, Dems could be isolating black people from full integration, if we're being real about their track record. Oh, and it's not like skin color doesn't matter to the grand old party. Republicans downplay race. And so they don't. One of the things I'd like to see and I'm seeing is more diversity in the Republican Party. And take a look around at these wonderful members. This is the most diverse class of Republicans ever elected in the history of the United States Congress. We have more women than were ever elected before, more Hispanic members ever elected before, more African-American members in modern history. A white non-journalist talk show host telling white politicians in front of a white audience that the GOP is less white than it used to be. When your political party has very little diversity, skin color doesn't matter. But melanin becomes a selling point when, say, black rappers come around. Before I continue, white men still have and use safe spaces too. See, boardrooms, investor meetings, NFL team ownership, you know, the U.S. Senate and the House of Representatives. The 118th Congress is the most diverse ever, yet still not only 75% white, but more white than the U.S. population. And it's here that I want to point out that on average, Congress has become more conservative over the past five decades. And conservative perspective and point of view dominate social media. So when conservatives want a safe space, despite not calling it what it is, of course, what exactly are they separating from? It's not them who want to get away from these sexual harassmenters interviewing each other. They love that. What I ain't gonna do with the rest of my time in this video is talk about the benefits of safe spaces. We know what they are. Even the writer of this article from the headline I showed earlier recognizes how safe spaces can be helpful. People who have experienced real trauma, violent crimes, rape, the loss of loved ones, and violence do need special consideration. Absolutely. I shouldn't have to say that it's not up to anybody else to determine or dictate who does or does not qualify for a safe space, especially when people who claim to share your values hate safe spaces so much that they need safe spaces. Hiding behind a claim that free speech is under attack. And yes, safe spaces can be detrimental to those who need to have their worldviews challenged, to hear opposing comments, to be critiqued and corrected. But the people questioning safe spaces do so inside filter bubbles and echo chambers. Safe spaces. The Fox Newses of the world wants to burn high school specialty interest groups where students can be a part of a chess club, for example, put heat on jobs that feature employee resource groups for ethnicities, happy Hispanic Heritage Month, by the way, but have no smoke for churches that have ministries for ages 50 plus. The right wants to firebomb colleges and universities that also contain brave spaces. That's a thing. Again, can't stress this enough. Safe spaces come in many shapes and sizes by many names. It's only a problem when younger generations or black and brown people or people on the left use them. They can't both pretend to be brave as individuals and be glad there's a safe space to hide from trans people. Well, the Cheers theme song did say something about someone's husband wanting to be a girl. Meanwhile, I'm trying to be a regular somewhere. I walk in and they say, hey, my architect know Japanese. That's how it is on the internet. I want that in real life, except if I ask for the usual on social media, I would get a comment saying that I make everything about race. So we're gonna be all right. 
Find a safe space for yourself behind that subscribe button. I'm pretty sure there's smaller ones behind the like and dislike buttons too. Be sure to become a member and help me pay for ice cream so I don't get kicked out of these parlors either.